So this is not very intense. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a quite expensive bottle here on my cask. It's a Glen Farkless family cask, vintage 1988 and bottled in 2013. And this is 56.4 ABV and a hefty price tag between 270 and 300 euros dollars pounds. So the family casks are quite expensive for this 25 year old whiskey. And if you know Glenfrakless whiskies, this one belongs to the lighter ones because this wasn't bottled uh, from a first fill sherry cask or from multiple sherry, different sherry casks, first and second fill. But this, this one is a single cask from a refill sherry hogshead. This is cask number 1993 to be exact. Um, it's bottled on July the 2nd, 2013 and one of 261 bottles and a hogshead is quite a small cask and a sherry hogshead is something very special. Um, in former times, 1988, uh, the freight rates over the Atlantic Ocean were quite high. So you dismantled the old American bourbon casks uh, into single staves, shipped them in a container or well, something other uh, transport containers uh, to Scotland and then labor was quite cheap. There had been the big British recession starting from 1979 and went well into the 1980s. And uh, well, labor was cheap and they rebuilt the cask and then they said, well, American Standard Battle is a little bit too small. We are doing a hogshead, not 208 liters or 50, five gallons, 53 gallons, but a little bit bigger. So 250 liters. And uh, they also bought casks from Spain in staves. And those staves uh, were rebuilt into hogsheads in Scotland as well. So there had been sherry hogsheads on the market. Uh, and there had been, of course, first fill and second fill. And this one had been a refill. I have no idea of second or third fill, but if you have a look at the color, it must be a second fill because uh, the color transferred from the cask walls into the whiskey uh, go down like this. So it's a reducing function. And uh, in the first years, most of the color is transferred and then less and less. And for 25 years, it's quite dark. So it should be uh, the second fill of this sherry hawk's head. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, this one had an, a fault at the cork, so I'm able to open it. You see here uh, the dropped out uh, whiskey on the label. It had filled, I had one already of this one, uh, like this, so it wasn't fill full completely and the, the cork on top, you see these coloring here where the whiskey dropped out and a color on the top and if you look very <laughs> in detail, oops! So yeah, I took a video about uh, how to open a bottle the right way uh, and typically uh, you glue this uh, wooden top uh, to the cork uh, to refix it, but in this case the cork is well, it's crap. So there was the quality assurance wasn't good enough and there is a very <laughs> natural cork used. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this one was bottled from a single cask in cask strength. It's 56.4 ABV. Uh, so I have to use a little water uh, to dilute it down uh, to drinking strength. Um, but at first have a sniff. It's 
So this is not very intense. There is vanilla and caramel and a faint fruitiness and alcohol, of course. 56.4, you're able to smell that. And there's some menthol, eucalyptus. Yeah, that's a refreshing note in my nose. Yeah. So just a little bit. So this is the last one today. I can afford a little bit of, of a higher, uh, higher strength. So this might be at 50, 52. Yes, it opens a little bit and there's a faint fruitiness, but the distillery char character has already lost a little bit against the cask. And if you have those old uh, Glen Farkless family cask, I had one of 1962 already, there's a video on it, uh, I'll put the link here, um, where you have first fill sherry cask matured for 40 years or even longer, then the distillery character hides very much behind the cask. So having a refilled cask is no bad idea for a very old whiskey, because you're still able to, well, to savor, to, to smell, uh, to taste uh, the original distillery character, which is very mature then, and have the cask as a, well, as the opposite of the maturation on the other side as well. If you have a first fill sherry cask, then the cask will dominate all the distillery character of the whiskey in those long years. So 25 years is not too long, but it's quite a time. And uh, those refill sherry hogsheads will give a lot of cask aroma to the whiskey. Yeah, so the, the smell is not too, too intense. No, diluting it a little bit reduces also the, the aromas. It's more and more in my mouth. It's mouth-watering. It's so intense. It's so incredibly wonderful. Mouth-filling, mouth-watering, showing the oakiness, bringing out, well, oranges, orange juice, and, and no bitterness. So these sherry hogsheads brought less bitterness than I expected. I thought about, well, dark chocolate and no sherry, but all the uh, the bitterness of the tannins, of the oak. And no, it's just incredibly good. And now afterwards, the smell is, is more intense, yes. Fruitiness showing up. Now you, I'm able to find the fruitiness between all those uh, cast influences, the fruitiness coming from the, well, the original raw whiskey from the stills. <sighs> and it's a warming, rewarding aftertaste. Really good. Hmm. Dangerously good. Oh, wonderful. Second gulp. Oh, and a, a welcoming, smooth spiciness filling out the completeness of my mouth. Oh, and, well, 
Be careful, those first fill extremely dark old casks. They lack the distillery character. The cask has taken over completely. So the refill casks have a better influence on the whiskey on the very long run. So if you reach 20, 25 years, then switching or, or having, not switching over to, no, it's the cask which matures. So having one which matured in a refill cask will be more complex than the the original matured first fill sherry cask. This will always be sherry cask and oakiness and sherry and that's all. But this one still has distillery character in it. But the nose is a little a little weak because the distillery character reduces over the time. There's this subtractive maturation in the whiskey where all those young and intense aromas mature to uh, more settled, darker ones, and the cask builds up in the same time, takes over, and this one is, well, close to the top of perfection in terms of taste and aftertaste. Oh, I can't have any other whiskey behind this one. It's so wonderful, so rewarding. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come and hopefully Morgan Farkle's family cask. And have a look at our whiskey database where all those family casks may be shown. I'm not quite sure if every family cask bottle is in. Probably not. Uh, but please add your whiskies to this whiskey database to have it grow more complete. Thank you very much for watching.